Alana Pierce is an Australian video game writer and former journalist that is in hot water right now because of the comments that she made on her latest Elden Ring review video. In the first half of her video, she touches on how the difficulty of Elden Ring is the game's fundamental core principle. The game is designed in such a way by you are supposed to die a thousand times before you beat the boss. So any criticisms levied upon the game's difficulty are null and void. In the second half of her video, she talks about how Elden Ring can improve their accessibility options to include disabled people without breaking the game's fundamental core structure, which is its difficulty. She then went on to list the types of disabilities being permanent, temporary, and situational. What got her into hot water was the example that she gave when defining situational disability. There are also multiple kinds of disabilities, especially where gaming is concerned. There are long-term disabilities, there are situational disabilities, there are temporary disabilities. It counts as a disability where a video game like Elden Ring is concerned if you have a kid. You have a two-year-old, you're trying to play Elden Ring, you can't pause. That is a situational disability that you have, where the game not having the option for you to be able to pause, for example, is a hindrance for your particular disability, a situational disability. Now, the main bone of contention here is a terminology issue. There are two categories in which the word disabled can be used. The first is the most common one, referring to physical or mental disabilities. <laughs> That is it. The second category falls under technology. For example, your Bluetooth controller has been disabled or your phone's access to Wi-Fi has been disabled. Now, what we're witnessing here is a classic categorical error. You are taking humans and putting them under the technological context, which doesn't work. That's why it's wrong to consider someone disabled because they have responsibilities to their children, which may hinder them from playing a game. Now, since hindsight is always king, Alana should have used a different word or a different example. End of story. Assassin's Creed Shadows is already shaping up to be the most controversial game that Ubisoft has ever put out, and now they are facing the wrath of Japanese players who are petitioning them to straight up cancel the game, accusing it of being a serious insult to Japanese culture and history. How badly do you have to mess up? You have the literal culture of the game that you're working on. Write up a petition telling you to go back to the drawing board. You'll never see my face again. Where are you going? I'm going to Dubai. <laughs> so, I really think Ubisoft should cancel this game because it's the racist and then their respond, they don't listen to Japanese voice. They real they <laughs> they're so blind or it's like almost psychopaths to me. <laughs> Or like other comments, change the name, Assassin's Creed Isekai, Assassin's Creed Fantasy, accept it. And at this point, I'm not surprised that something like this has transpired. The red flags were there. At first, I was on your side, Ubisoft. I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt, but then you had to show your true colors. And now, the chickens have finally come home to roost. And even though it's not going to do much, you can be damn sure that my signature is going to be on that petition. And that's a fact. This is your answer. Are you sure of your count? My, that's quite a number. And the correct one, no less. I see you're keeping track. We almost died! So you agree? F yes, that was, th th this was insane! That was pure luck! I was not in control of that situation at all! <laughs> Non-stop pop FM. I had a crush on my teacher and it made me really confused because I got homeschooled. Oh, me! Sweet home! Yeah, that brother's starving. Word came so. down. We are green to go. So gear up and grab your shoes. Nope. <laughs> Helldivers 2 reportedly loses 90% of its player base on PC. That is a massive, massive drop for an extremely popular game for a short period of time. Now, a lot of controversy was around the PlayStation Network situation. Um, and right here, they reversed their course on that, but that created a massive uproar at the time. PlayStation reverses course on Helldivers 2 PSN account requirement. Sony Interactive Entertainment says, we've heard your feedback after fan uproar.
And that got an initial bump from a lot of people, and there was a lot of excitement. But in reality, not everything was cleared up, even though that's what initially was thought uh, by the fans. You still had over 100 countries that were didn't have access to play the game. Now, then you had the situation with Discord, and we're still having that problem with Discord, where the Helldivers 2 mods and community managers are absolutely horrible. They are terrible. And they have made it very crystal clear that if you don't line up with their leftist politics, then they don't want you in their Discord. And that problem is continuing to happen. Helldivers 2 is a perfect case study of what happens when a company decides to stop entertaining, gets greedy, and goes political. These companies think that they can operate with impunity and still have success waiting for them at the end of the day. How arrogant do you have to be to think that you can slap your audience in the face and still expect them to shake your hand? Sheer fucking hubris. Anyway, as usual, thank you, you awesome, fantastic people for tuning in and for uh, liking and subscribing and supporting my content, giving my life a bit of meaning. Remember, stay frosty and VWIW. Vote with your wallet.